Laws govern everyday life. The legal system exists to provide justice to everyone. Attorneys are there to serve. If bankruptcy looms, if the police come knocking on your door, if your constitutional rights have been violated, or if you or a loved one have been injured through no fault of your own, we depend on them to defend our rights. Many are intimidated by the complexities of the law. Our mission is to help you navigate the legal system, to provide you with news you can use on Talking Law TV. Welcome to another episode of Talking Law TV. I'm your host, Michael Short. On the show tonight, we have Christy Register talking about hiring a personal injury attorney soon after an accident. Doug Andrews will be here talking about boating under the influence. And a special guest, Judge Ann Barnes of the Georgia Court of Appeals. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Who defends the Constitution when somebody challenges its authority? For more than 200 years, our courts and the judges, juries, and lawyers who serve justice every day have protected American freedoms by upholding the Constitution as the highest law in the land. America won't work without fair and impartial courts. State Bar of Georgia, lawyers dedicated to the Constitution's promise of justice for all. Leave your legal question for us on our toll-free law line at 888-203-7LAW. And welcome back to Talking Law TV. We're here with Christy Register. Hi, Christy. Hey, Michael. And your subject to, to, is, on this episode is talking about hiring a personal injury attorney soon after an accident. Yes, very so, important. So I have a picture for you. Okay. Should I call you now? I tell you, it would be fantastic. I would, I, as an attorney, I would love to be able to take my own photographs. And if you if you look at this scene, what could be there? Skid marks. If if the drivers ran off the road, you've got tracks, other vehicles, point of impact. Um, so you know, no time is too soon. Of course, we don't want to get in the way of the investigating officer, but the sooner the better. Have bottom you, line. Have you ever actually been called from the accident scene? <laughs> by my daughter, <laughs> which doesn't count, okay. um, but no, unfortunately not, and, and obviously people are concerned, is everybody okay, um, you know, if you're, you're going to the hospital, you, you may not think to call a lawyer right then, and it's okay if you don't, but the sooner we can get in and get those photos, measure skid marks, the better the case is. Okay, our next picture, have you been called from the emergency room before? I think I've, the earliest I've been called is right after the emergency room. And, and we, we welcome calls anytime. I, I do go to the hospital and a lot of people think, oh, you're an ambulance chaser. Pictures speak a thousand words. So if I can get in with, with our good camera as opposed to a cell phone camera that people are taking pictures with, it's, it's even better. So you would come to the hospital in the, in the room and... Oh, I've done that a lot. If people call me, uh, and I do that at home, if, if I have a client who is having trouble getting out and about, I go to their house or, or wherever they want to meet me. So you often go to make home visits? And I do. I, I worked as a home health nurse before I became a lawyer, so I'm, I'm certainly comfortable with going into people's homes um, and seeing them if they can't come to us. And well, probably in a lot of instances where they have wheelchairs or crutches, it's a, it's a big deal to... Right. Well, a, a, a personal injury case that I'm, I'm just beginning to wrap up this lady was homebound for two months after her accident, so I just went to her. And it, it really uh, it's an advantage, too, to me, because, um, number one, I think people are more at ease when you go into their homes, and it lets me know them a little better. This is, you know, their home and where they live, what they do. I think you get a good idea of their, their real lifestyle versus what they tell you. Exactly. Um, what needs to be done right away, though? Let's get back to all seriousness to the accident. You, you're, you've had the accident. You've been taken to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're in for treatment. Maybe you've been discharged. Is that typically when you get called as someone says, you know what, you need a lawyer? Yeah, that, that's the more typical. Um, and, and if there is uh, anything left at the accident scene, then we'll go out and take photos. But, you know, skid marks disappear quickly, especially um, if there's a heavy rain. Um, so sometimes it's too late for that when I get called in. Um, hopefully the vehicles are still available. Yeah, I was going to ask you, but, you know, in, I've been involved in an accident many years ago when I, I feel I was taken advantage of. And, and the insurance company was very quick to see if they could get control of the car. Exactly. Like, can we, can we go ahead and pay you for this now? Mm hmm And then they'll send it to salvage so there are no photos. It's destroyed. Or it can be quickly repaired. So, again, a picture speaks a thousand words. So if we can get in, and even, you know, I've, I've gone to 
SAP's record service and, and dug through to get to the vehicle to take the photos of my client's car because they're so valuable when it comes time to settle or if you go before a jury, those pictures of the vehicle showing that terrible damage are very, very valuable. Now, when they want to settle and buy the car, do they then own the car and they can do what they want? They do. Or, so it's important that you don't give up the car. Exactly. Exactly. Um, if they pay you for the car, you sign the documents to get the transfer uh, title transferred, it's their vehicle, it's going to be destroyed. So if you're in a bad accident, before you call a lawyer, don't do anything with the vehicle. Don't get it repaired um, and certainly don't sign the title over so it'll be destroyed. What, what if you need a car and you have to do something? Well, um, if, it, if it's slight damage, then you may want to go ahead and do that. If it's a significant accident with severe damage, extensive damage to vehicles, you want to let your lawyer see it. Yeah. Do I need a copy of the accident report with me when I come to see you, or is that something you take care of? We do that. We, we do everything. Um, we get the accident report, we get the medical records, we get the medical bills. All I need from our clients is to know where to get them from. Um, the accident report is very helpful, and that's usually available a couple of days after the accident. They're, they work quickly to get that. Is it important? Do you get a lot of good information from that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it tells you where the vehicles are. And, you know, it'll tell you, did the other person's car get towed as well? And if so, where did it go to? Um, it gives you information about insurance, about the defendant, the person who caused the accident. If there were any skid marks measured, it gives you witnesses' names. So it's invaluable. Okay. If, if I was the injured party and the person that hit me received a, a citation, do I have to go to court and speak against them? Is you, it necessary? If you may get a subpoena, and of course, if you're subpoenaed by the court, then you need to appear. Um, I, as the attorney, always want to go to court anyhow. And sometimes um, the defendant, the person who caused the accident, will just pay the fine ahead of time and not show up for court. So I've had that happen before. Um, sometimes they don't pay the fine, they don't show up for court. And, th and that's useful too. I've just recently, in a case, gotten proof from the court that they didn't show up, which shows further irresponsible behavior on their part. Um, but going to court, um, your lawyer having an opportunity to go to court, you get a chance to see the defendant. What kind of person is he? Does he make a good appearance or does he make a lousy appearance? And that's real useful when you're um, presenting your claim and deciding whether to try to get it settled or just go, go to trial. Does it make a difference in, in the personal injury case if the person got a ticket or not? It does. Um, if they did not get a ticket, that's, that's not the kiss of death, but it's real useful if they did get a citation um, and if they, if they pay the fine, then they've uh, acknowledged that they're guilty. So, so it, it is very useful. Does the other side have to share the information they get from you with their insurance company? The insurance company has to provide this information if they are asked in the proper format which most lay people don't know. So, uh, you know, I've, I've had a client who was on the eve of settling her case with the insurance company because they told her that's all that they had. She got it to me, no, they had 60,000 more that they didn't tell her about. So if you ask for it in the proper format, which is uh, lined out in a statute in, in Georgia, then they are required to give it to you. If you don't, then they're not required to give it to you. Okay, well, thank you, Christy. If you have questions about a personal injury issue involving a motor vehicle accident, you can reach Christy through our website at TalkingLawTV.com or to call and ask her a question on our toll-free number at 888-203-7-LAW, L-A-W, which is 529. We'll be right back right after this. Thanks for watching Talking Law TV. We feature the area's leading local attorneys, recent court rulings, and laws that can affect your daily lives. That's why we say legal news you can use. Coming soon, Talking Law TV's producers will be bringing another news magazine program to WSAV. For Your Health TV, a news magazine show featuring the Coastal Empire's leading health and wellness professionals. For more info about the show, visit the website at foryourhealthtv.com. And thanks for watching. Have a legal issue? Visit TalkingLawTV.com and leave your question. It may be used on the show.